Hello, Frontline Teach. This is Val again. I would like to talk with you about uh, the topic of general health maintenance. Uh, this is good for folks, not just those living with HIV, uh, but everybody else too. Uh, so there's some good news and some bad news about general health maintenance. The bad news is, of course, there's germs everywhere. We share our world with bacteria and they live all over the place. Um, but the good news here is that the body is really good at keeping itself healthy. Uh, and, uh, you know, as these slides make clear, our immune system is really good. The slide, in fact, calls it a genius about getting rid of germs, even if people living with HIV and AIDS. Uh, and in fact, as I've mentioned before, the skin is the biggest immune system organ that the body has. So although we live in a world that's full of bacteria and fungus and parasites, um, even people living with HIV have something on their side 24 7 that fights the that fights those things um, so there are some ways that we can help the body to keep germs out um, washing hands thoroughly with soap and water um, and this includes before you eat after you touch your nose mouth or other parts of your face uh, and this can help germs stay out of your system uh, it is recommended that you cook food thoroughly. Uh, the key is to cook meat until the pink parts are all gone uh, uh, because that exposes bacteria to high enough heat that they can't exist anymore. They die. Uh, we also uh, recommend that you keep raw meat separate from other food. Uh, if you cut up meat on a cutting board and then you cut up salad on the cutting board later, you might cook the meat well enough uh, to kill the bacteria, but then the salad that is on that cutting board uh, might still be able to get into your system, um, and that would be bad. Uh, there are other ways to help keep germs out, um, and pet care is something that's really important for folks living with HIV. Uh, it, you know, pets provide love and companionship, um, there's a danger of toxoplasmosis, uh, one of the opportunistic infections that's carried in cat poo, um, but it doesn't mean that someone needs to give up their cat in order to keep themselves healthy. The real risk is in interacting with their poo, and so if, um, you know, if you have a cat um, or if you, someone who's living with HIV has a cat, um, the best is to let them do their business outdoors um, and not interact with their poop at all, but that's unrealistic. Um, and it's hunting outdoors that actually exposes cats to toxoplasmosis. Um, so if uh, if they're indoor cats and they're litter box and they've never been outside, then chances are good that they have not been exposed to toxoplasmosis. But um, it says if they're litter box, getting someone else to change it is best. If that's not possible, invest in a box of gloves and wash, wash hands very well after changing the litter because you really don't want to get that uh, germ into your system. Um, so birds, caged birds, can also carry MAC, Mycobacterian avian complex, so they might not make good pets for someone, um, but uh, they they very well could. Um, and again, if those um, uh, birds have never been outdoors, uh, chances are lower that they'll carry any of these germs. Uh, we can also help the body by stopping smoking or by cutting back. Um, and this is really difficult for a lot of people. Um, you know, smoking is uh, delicious and fun and a good break and a lot of other things. Um, it's also extremely dangerous and bad for the system. So uh, each person has to weigh the risks and benefits for their own self. Um, but one of the benefits to stopping smoking um, is that uh, it helps to keep the body's immune system in good shape. Uh, and so what happens is that smoking actually paralyzes the wiggly little fingers called cilia that are in our throat and nose. Um, and their whole job is to stop germs from getting into your lungs or into the rest of your system. Um, and smoking paralyzes them. So it basically st it stops your defenses from being able to defend you. Um, and people who smoke are much more likely to get emphysema, pneumonia, and other infections of the lungs, and that's on top of any immune problems that someone might have from HIV. So if this is something that you're struggling with, there are some good resources to help. Um, if you're interested, let us know. Uh, 
there are some other steps to keep healthy. Uh, reduce your stress. This one is much easier said than done. Um, but when you're stressed out, you're you're in battle mode, and your your body is um, fighting the stress and not maybe the illness that uh, you're struggling with. Uh, get a good night's sleep. Uh, make time for yourself. These are both good ways that daily ways of reducing your stress. Um, uh, and then this is a sort of list of what um, regular checkup someone might expect to get. Uh, a monthly breast or testicle self-exam, or both. Um, uh, once or twice a year, um, the dental exam is recommended. Um, and this is especially important for folks living with HIV because a lot of opportunistic infections can show themselves in the mouth before they show anywhere else. Uh, so no one likes to go to the dentist, but it's a crucial piece of good health. Uh, a full physical for everyone yearly, uh, cholesterol screening er er everyone yearly, a uh, colorectal exam yearly after the age of 50, a uh, mammogram after the age of 40 every year or two, a uh, pelvic exam every one to three years depending on sexual activity and health, uh, blood pressure should be checked at least every two years, uh, glucose and blood sugar. The recommendation is if someone's over 45 it should be checked every three years. If your family has a history of diabetes, you should probably check it more regularly. And that's true for all of these. Um, you know, if there's a family history of, say, colon cancer, you might want to start checking that before the age of 50, no matter what the guidelines say. Um, the guidelines say to check the thyroid every five years. Uh, have an eye exam um, every five years until the age of 40 and then every two to four years after 40. Again, this is something that is um, really crucial for folks living with HIV uh, and the recommendation is to get it checked more regularly than this even before 40. Uh, and then the, we recommend that folks get their hearing tested every 10 years. So join us for part two of general health maintenance uh, on YouTube. We'll see you there. Bye-bye.